Here we see Billy Hukin, the razor grinder. He gets his blade forgings in a box, probably three dozen or six dozen at a time. Empties them on the hull floor and sorts them. From that situation, he has to grind the blade to give it form. There are something like 37 operations to finish, grind, glaze and polish an open razor. The first of these is the process of rough grinding, hollow grinding. Since the advent of the artificial grindstone, the operation of initially grinding the blade has altered. Here we see two grinding wheels running side by side and the blade is pushed between them. The grinder's left hand is working a handle which is moving the left wheel closer to the right hand one. And as it forces the blade one to another it makes the blade thinner till it gets down to the right thickness. He can tell by looking at it, but he checks it. He presses the blade against his thumbnail. This enables him to judge the thickness of the blade to know whether it is of the right strength. After the initial grinding process, the blade goes through a number of other processes, of which this is one. Look how quick he changes the position from one side to the other. The white on his hands is whiting. This stops the blade from going rusty. The time that is spent not actually on the wheel is considered to be lost time. So the quicker that can, the changeover can take place, the better. No open razors are now made in Sheffield anymore. One firm in Germany is still producing them and peculiarly enough quite a number are made in China. After the blade has been ground and polished it has to have its handle fitted. In Sheffield parlance this is called setting in and wetting. This is Colin Ward and he gets his blades from the razor grinder to make, put them in the handle. And what he's done here, he's got the handles in his left hand, he fitted the blade in with his right hand and he's now putting the pin in which will form the hinge. This has to be riveted on both sides. And then the blade has to go exactly down the centre of the handle. If it doesn't, it catches, of course. What he's doing now is to put two small washers onto a piece of wire. He's put the blade into the handle and the piece of wire is put through the hole in the scales and the blade and he picks up two more washers. 
in the cutlery trade did not call washers, they call rivets. He knocks a piece of wire down and cuts it off and rivets it again. Watch his left hand, it's rolling round all the time. What that does is to give the rivet a nice domed head. In the old days, they used to prepare razor scales, as they were known, from bone, horn, ivory, a number of natural materials, and each had to be filed to shape. This is showing a similar process, and then each has to have a hole at one end, and this is done on a horizontal drill, and you'll notice he's holding it with his left hand, and his knee is pushing his hand, so the drill goes forward into the scale. The little washers, that are called rivets, are produced from some material that's called latin. It's very thin nickel silver sheet. And in the cutler has a special punch which makes a hole in the centre and cuts the outside all in one go. This is done on a piece of lead and he picks the little washers, or rivets as they're called, out and into his apron. They then go into his rivet box, which is a small box with perforated metal in the top to allow the wire to poke through. There's the operation again. Done so quickly, the eyes can hardly see. And look what he's using for a hammer. A file. Clip. And that tiny hammer, just the right weight to spread the head of the rivet and no more. In days when scales were made of pearl and ivory, they had to be very careful so as not to split the material. Now we're coming up to the final processes. This is known as wetting, putting the very final edge on. A little oil, a very fine stone. This one is called Belgian rock. A wipe. There it is, Sheffield blade. Touch with the strop. And a test. Another wipe. Into its little bag. There's the finished article. First, this comes off.
You don't need uh, expensive shaving soap. That's something else you don't need to be shaved. And all that baloney about uh, the lather makes, makes the hair uh, rigid, stand up rigid, it's all bull. <laughs> well then, all these gimmicks, these uh, people get up to sell their stuff, don't they? Of course it is. That's right. Right, it's over. You must get your hands wet so you just rust your razor. No, no, you're right. Which, which razor's that one you've got? That's an old razor. Mouse asleep, Ken. Mouse asleep. Well, it's a pleasure to have a shave. If you haven't got a good razor, it must be agony. It's supposed to be a bit extra, isn't it? It is indeed. I like to see people look nice and tidy, women and men, and I am a great admirer of, of beauty, no matter if it's in human form or any form. And. Uh, a good looking man can spoil his face with a scruffy looking beard. Can't feel this really, can we? Well, shave him out to sleep, can <laughs> Lovely. So I get the ladder off, back in the pot. Not done yet, I want to stop it for you. What, what make a razor is that then? What is it? It's a beauty, that real beauty. Sellers. A sellers? Mm. And how old is it, do you think? Oh, twenties. Oh. Mm. So we're talking about 70 year old then? Mm. Uh, twenties. Mm. You're not much good for trade then. Mm. What a beautiful mark that is. Mm. Mm. My wife is a son set me off. She is she often said, I don't mind you growing a moustache, just to see how you looked. So I used to get a, a coat and burn it. And <laughs> go on, so there, that's how I look. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> how many razors have you got here, Bill? Oh, about 20. Mm. And do you use them all in strict rotation? Yeah. Mm. Take it from that end. Yeah. And finish with it with that end. Yeah. Proper look like that. It's like a, like a bookcase, that, isn't it? That's right. Um, bookcase is a proper look. Yes. Yeah. What's this business about giving a razor a rest? A delicate thing like a razor, it just almost goes to nothing. It doesn't want much to damage it. The hair, which is, as we said, is horn, like a 
thing in Antonia, mm. must slightly damage it. Mm. See, and that's why it's shop up to bring that Edge up back. to its uh, previous uh, condition. Yes. And if you rest it, it'll gradually, if it's bent over, it'll gradually recover, you see, because mm. it's a springy seal. Yes. And so, so it, that's my theory, I don't know. Yes. No, what you're saying. And stopping also bring that straight again, you see. So what you're saying is in the actual shaving, it, it distorts or well, bends the edge. To do because it's so to fine, do, that's it? right. Mm. Exactly. So fine. Yes. I mean, uh, uh, a few wetters I knew, that's when they put the fine, in, fine edge on, mm. holding, after they've been ground, used to wet them on the uh, wetting stone. Then they'd pluck a hair out of the head. And if it did that, Ken, you know, it cut it, it was good, wasn't it? Because mm. the hair has not much strength to stand up, and they, that's what they used to do. Yeah. Might one out of every two or three dozen. Yes. If you want that and just, just to make sure. Yeah. And to yeah. think that all this was handwork, you know, without the aid of any machinery whatsoever. Mm. and. Everyone as good as its neighbour, yeah, absolutely the tops. The, that's uh, the incredible thing about by it. By sight and judgment. Mm. Oh, that's why the, the Sheffield's kills were so great.